Hey everyone, thank you for joining today's Customer Spotlight with uh, Gainsight. My name is Mohammed Khalid. I'm the Director of Solutions Engineering here at Better Cloud, and I'm accompanied today uh, with Brandon Wolf. Brandon, it's great to have you here. Uh, to get us started, can you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your role and what your company does? Hey Mo, it's great to, uh, great to be here. Thanks for having me. I'm Brandon Wolf. I'm Senior SaaS Ops Engineer uh, for Gainsight. Gainsight's the leader in customer success. Uh, we help eliminate churn and drive growth throughout the entire post-sales journey. I've been here for almost five years. Uh, when we started, there were right around 400 employees, and now we'll likely hit 1,000 before the end of the year. So much of that growth has been in our past year. Wow, that's like pretty explosive growth, especially given the state of the world and everything. So I'm sure we'll touch on that a little bit more uh, later on, but please continue. Yeah. Uh, prior to Gainsight, I was the director of technology for a small independent school in Brooklyn, New York, uh, where I did my best to uh, throw everything up into the cloud. So. That's awesome, Brandon. So let's get started. Can you tell me a little bit about how IT and SaaS ops operates within Gainsight? Yeah. So, um, you know, our basic IT stack is comprised of like uh, Okta for SSO, Google Workspace, we're a big Google company. So we've got uh, email and calendar and docs and, and groups or DLs through that. Uh, we use Slack for internal communications, uh, Zoom for teleconferencing, MS Office for you know, those folks that like the desktop apps. Um, and you know, IT is constantly taking over more and more apps from other orgs in the company. Um, Gainsight was built in the cloud and we're all SaaS. So we've got on-prem nothing. Um, and, uh, you know, so it's super helpful to have tools that can sort of access and assist you in managing, you know, all of those SaaS applications. It's so exciting to speak with customers that are actually fully SaaS forward. So the fact that you're mentioning it's not no on-prem, that's great. Uh, tell me a little bit about your team makeup and like who owns the apps per se within your, within the team makeup. Um, so right now it's, uh, it's sort of, um, uh, I'm, I sort of own a lot of the apps, um, but we have a whole help desk uh, set up. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of folks that are, that are uh, running sort of a 24 five uh, help desk. Um, we've got some other uh, solutions engineers in, uh, in India. Um, we are a globally diverse company. Um, and uh, so we, we really just sort of, you know, we hand off things as we can and, um, when we were smaller, we were, you know, it was easy just to give super admin access to like everybody who was, you know, on the IT team. Uh, and as we scale, it's, it's uh, getting a little more tricky. Yeah, that super admin access part scares me uh, quite a bit. And I'm sure <laughs> we'll jump into that as well. So no, I, I appreciate the introduction and, and rundown of how your uh, teams are made up. It sounds like a lot of it was actually being owned by you. So you're probably happy with this massive growth that you're able to start extending that out a little bit more. Indeed. Um, all right, so let's let's actually rewind a little bit. You know, let's talk about prior to getting better cloud. Uh, tell me about the processes and challenges you were facing managing your SaaS stack uh, in general. Yeah, so I think um, you know one of our more difficult and time-consuming processes was offboarding. Um, you know, most of our major major applications require Octave for signing in. You know, we've got that SAML connection. So cutting access to Okta sort of successfully locks out somebody from most of the applications, but there's a lot more that needs to happen for successful offboarding. Um, you know, Okta is great for provisioning some applications and it can do deprovisioning as well, but that can be really destructive. Um, and so for instance, like with Google, uh, you know, when the gamester leaves, uh, we need to give their, uh, we need to delegate their email to their manager we need to give their, uh, their docs to their manager. We need to give all their calendars. You know, we need the manager to have access to those. There's a lot of things that need to be handed off uh, just in the Google ecosystem alone. So, I love that. You should have been wearing a shirt today that said Gainster because that's probably like <laughs> the, my favorite term that I've heard so far. Well, um, let me ask you this. So you just talked about transferring docs, calendar events, et cetera. So how are you handling that? Were, were those scripts, were those manual and also a follow-up question on that how much time was that taking you to actually even complete yeah so basically we just had this uh, really long spreadsheet uh with a list of offboarding items 
and you would just check them off as you go along. Um, and that was mostly for Google. Uh, so, you know, uh, you know, after cutting access to Okta, we'd have to sort of take over the end user's Okta account, uh, turn off their MFA, uh, sign into their Google to delegate it to their e delegate their email to their manager, transfer wow. ownership of the docs, all the things that, you know, I was talking about before, that was just a big manual process. Okay, so tell me a little bit about the confidence that these things are actually being done because I am talking to customers often and they're, they're concerned about auditability and finding out after the fact that something wasn't done. As a matter of fact, in the examples, I, when, I, when I speak with these customers, they tell us, yeah, there's often times where we ended up deleting an account and we realized after the fact that we needed uh, access to the file. So what was your confidence like during those days? Uh, not, not terribly high. Um, you know, uh, unless I was doing it myself and, and even then, you know, it's like you're, you're running it for a, a growing, uh, company, you're going to get pulled away at certain times, you know, there's going to be little fires that you've got to put out and, you know, this offboarding process takes time and you're having to go through and yeah, you're checking things off as you go, but, uh, things get dropped sometimes. So no, I wasn't, I was not terribly confident. So, okay. Well, so I think that's sets us up perfectly for the next question I'm going to ask. We rewind it. So now we're going to do the opposite. We're going to fast forward and let's talk about now you've adopted better cloud. So a few questions I have here is around how was your onboarding experience? Uh, did you get value right away or did you have to get some processes in order? Uh, tell me a little bit about that. So the onboarding was actually great. We worked closely with the better cloud team. Uh, we told them about our current process and you know they helped us to basically get our get our apps connected uh, uh, into better cloud. Uh, and then they stepped us through setting up workflows that not only mimicked, uh, but in some areas actually improved the existing processes. So when you talk about improving the existing processes that happened right away as the initial implementation? Yeah, I mean, fortunately, uh, you know, the, the better cloud support that we had, they they had done this with a number of other organizations. So, you know, they sort of had the, uh, they had the best practices lined up already. Um, so things that we hadn't even thought of that maybe weren't like super critical, but were like nice to haves, uh, you know, sort of got brought into our, our process, so. No, and the, and the reason I asked that, Brandon, I mean, you know, first and foremost, I wanna give kudos to you and your team it actually shows how SaaS forward you are because a lot of customers we deal with and work with, you know, initially when they, talk about implementing better cloud, they're really trying to match where they're at currently, right? What their current process is. And what I've seen and what we've all seen is that a lot of times those current processes are the way they are because of the lack of solution sets they have in place. So lots of times I actually see a customer implement their current process. And then a few months down the road, they're like, oh, wow, we actually have this level of flexibility to even evolve further. And then they start improving. So the fact that you guys did that from day one, uh, that just speaks volumes to uh, your SaaS practice there. Um, since we're talking about automation, a lot of solutions tout automation. Uh, so my question for you is, do you have experience with these solutions? And uh, if so, how would you describe Better Cloud's approach to automation? Sure. Um, you know, th there's, uh, there's a certain amount of light automation that's built into things like Okta. Um, and so, you know, that's handy. And we toss a lot of things back and forth between Okta and Better Cloud. Um, uh, but we also use Workato uh, for automating information transfer from like our HR solutions into Okta. Um, now that's a pretty complex tool. Uh, we have a whole nother uh, team that we contract out to build out those workflows. Um, but once that information comes into, comes into Okta, then we can kick stuff over to Better Cloud. Better Cloud sees what's going on in Okta. It goes, oh, okay, cool. I'm going to take this. I'm going to put this user into this, you know, uh, uh, public Slack channel and put them into this uh, this Google group and just moves everything around as we as we need. And the great thing about that is it's something that an IT team that is busy doing all sorts of stuff. Uh, it's simple enough that we can just easily hop in there and adjust things as we need to. Yeah, and, and you know, even that example right there, we see more and more often the best of breed approach, and it's there's nothing wrong with it, right? Let's let's use the solution sets where they're the strongest for where you know what they're the strongest at. So I love that, and and you mentioned Octo, Workato. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about the flow? So is the flow that 
uh, where Kato's pulling some information, then pumping that into Okta, and then Better Cloud's picking up. Can you tell me about like where each, where essentially where they're picking up the baton for each app? Yeah. So you know, our HR department recruiting uses uh, Greenhouse. Um, so once they hit the hire button, uh, a Workato workflow kicks out and moves some information uh, around, and some of that goes into Okta. And then uh, it makes uh, Okta creates an account, and then uh, I think we use uh, Ulti Pro for uh, for the the sort of source of truth HR, and that brings more information in via Workato. And then once that information is in Okta, we're basically set. We can make you know we can make uh, Okta and and Better Cloud and all of these other things just play nice together. Well, I love that. That's that's such a great setup there. And again, it goes back to that best of breed approach and making sure that the right systems are picking up the baton uh, where they need to. And this actually ties in perfectly to the next question, uh, ironically, and that is uh, the momentum is really rising around zero touch IT, right? And it sounds like you already have some of that stuff in place based on what you're talking about there. But tell me if, if this is like an active initiative that you're undertaking. And if so, what are the ways that Better Cloud's helping you impact that? Oh, yeah. I mean, we're always looking at ways that we can automate. I mean, that's the whole thing. Everybody just wants to automate themselves out of a job. That'll never happen. But that's what we're, we're striving for. Um, because ultimately, the more you can automate, the more time you have for real work. Um, and uh, so I've, I've actually leveraged some of the blog posts that were written by Better Cloud uh, to further automate our offboarding process. Uh, and right now I'm working with the Better Cloud team to figure out what can we do with uh, these webhooks and custom triggers. I, I just love the part you just mentioned around the webhooks and custom triggers. I think you'll get excited by this. Um, it's something that is very near and dear to me. It's something that we're helping the, uh, our whole organization understand how powerful uh, that use case is. So I was actually at a CIO conference last week and the main trends I kept hearing in that conference was zero touch IT, ML and AI to really help improve the employee experience. Uh, and I'm going to geek out here for a second, but one of the things that we were playing around with and actually built out is that, you know, with that custom trigger capability, how we can even plug into the ITSMs of the world directly. So when a ticket comes in, because a lot of times these uh, onboarding, offboarding requests, or even one-off uh, self-service requests come from a ticketing system, and that's where the process is starting. So it's like, hey, when the ticket comes in, let's actually kick off the workflow from the ticket itself, right? And when, it, when we think about zero touch IT, this is the part where I'm geeking out, is actually built out a use case where it's like, hey, an employee, we don't even want them to have to go into their ITSM solution. Let's just have them go into a bot or go into Slack, submit the ticket there. That's all they're doing. They're just touching it and that's it, right? What they don't know that's happening in the background is that Slack or a bot is connected to their ITSM solution. The ITSM solution is picking up that ticket and then that ticket is triggering off a better cloud workflow. So that's actually really exciting to see that you're looking at webhooks and custom triggers because um, it's, it's uh, all that I've been thinking about and all that when we think about zero touch IT in general uh, has been resonating. So uh, definitely we'll follow up with you after this around that more. Let me kind of switch gears here. The world has, as you know, has seen a really wild, wild two years. Um, and finally, it seems like this year, knock on wood, we're back on the uptick. Uh, but with that uptick, we're also seeing, you know, what everyone's coining as the great resignation. So with that, you talked a lot about the growth, you know, a little under 400 to almost a thousand by the end of the year. So tell me if you guys are being impacted by the great resignation, uh, and if so, how are your teams handling it? Oh yeah, I mean, uh, I don't, I don't think there's any way that's not being affected by this. Uh, we actually saw it on a number of fronts. Um, I think we had a little bit of the pandemic shakeup where people begin to reevaluate things and start to look elsewhere. Um, but, you know, during that time, those two years, we were also acquired by Vista Partners, uh, and it was a pretty generous acquisition. And a lot of folks took that unexpected windfall as an opportunity to just sort of explore new avenues. Um, you know, we saw people who saw the growth we were experiencing and missed the days of those smaller companies. And so some people went to, you know, when to get back to that startup feeling. Um, you know, anytime you, you experience massive growth, there's gonna be big shifts. Um, and then we also had a few folks at the executive level who had kind of gotten to the top of the jungle gym. Uh, we use jungle gym instead of ladder. Um, I love that. And they didn't have anywhere else to go really. 
And so they went to larger companies where they could kind of stretch their abilities a little bit more. Um, you know, and of course, when influential people leave over time, they start to bring some of the folks over with them. So, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a natural thing that, that really just happens to, I think, any company um, over time. And, and we're experiencing it from a couple different angles right now. You know, before I even jump into my comment there, I can't get, like right now I'm picturing a bunch of executives on top of a jungle gym. So you can't get the <laughs> picture out of my head. But no, that's, that's pretty, no, I love it. I'm going to be thinking about that. Um, that's interesting though. You know, like uh, you started the conversation with the change around like the growth that you guys are experiencing, but you're also seeing a lot of change on the opposite avenue. And also the fact that you guys went through an acquisition during these wild two years. So a lot of momentum was in both directions. And I think, you know, given your answer, actually, let's uh, actually sets us up for the next question. And I want to jump into is, you know, when you think about better cloud, what's, what's the biggest weight that's lifted off of yours and your team's shoulder? By far, just automations around offboarding. Um, you know, we're, we're constantly sort of going in and just fine tuning our, our onboarding and, and change management workflows. So it's, it's just been huge. So when you talk about fine tuning, let me ask you this, like, what is the level of effort that you, you guys actually put into tweaking these workflows when you realize that there's a change needed or you need to maybe add an additional app? Is, is there a lot that goes into tweaking those workflows? No, the, the workflows are, are fairly easy to tweak. I mean, again, uh, that's one of the great things about Better Cloud is that for, uh, you know, for um, an IT team that's, that's sort of got their hands in everything, um, they really make it easy to, to tweak and, and uh, sort of uh, they let you be a lot more nimble. Um, yeah, we'll have a lot of, uh, you know, with, with a lot of growth, we get, uh, you know, you'll get new heads of departments, you'll get, you know, and so we try to uh, meet up with those department heads, those hiring managers, you know, what do you need for your teams? What DLs, what uh, you know, there's always new public Slack channels that people are using for projects and this and that. Um, you know, when somebody joins your team, what do they need? Um, and anything, anywhere that we can automate, that's what we do. So tell me this. Um, you mentioned custom triggers earlier, but outside of custom triggers, and this probably goes into that question you're talking about automation, is what other plans do you have to extend to the new use cases within Better Cloud? Is it more automation? Is it other use cases? Uh, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, so again, we, we talked a little bit about uh, optimizing things, but but there's also, uh, you know, I, I mentioned the, the jungle gym. Um, it's pretty common practice for people to start out in one department uh, in Gainsight and then just sort of move over to this other department. Um, so the midlife cycle changes and whatnot. There's a lot of those. Yeah. And so, you know, you want to make sure that when that information changes in our HR system and it gets populated in Okta, uh, that Better Cloud picks it up and moves those individuals to where they need to be. So, so would you say right now your workflows, are they more blanketed for every employees or do you still have like role specific workflows and you want to extend that even further? Well, our, our offboarding uh, right now is pretty blanketed, but our onboarding is constantly changing and evolving. Um, you know, and we're constantly talking to, you know, uh, again, department heads, um, just figuring out, you know, what's, what's changing in their department, um, you know, or, or we get a new department head. Um, and, and we're just, we're, we're leveraging, uh, better cloud to just stay as nimble as we can and, and, uh, keep things chugging along. How many, uh, how many actually workflows do you have within your environment? Oh, and it's okay if you don't know the answer, but roughly speaking. I would say we've, we've probably got at least 50. Wow. All right. That's so heavy usage there on the automation and, front. And growing. So. Yeah. All right. Well, let me ask this thing, because we've talked a lot about automation. Now let's talk about how BetterCloud's helping you secure your SaaS environment. Are you using any of the security capabilities or are you purely focused on the automation side? Um, so one of the things that, that has really been super useful, um, you know, as I mentioned before, when we were smaller, everybody's sort of a super admin, um, 
what we've been doing more recently uh, as we've expanded our IT team uh, is really leveraging better cloud uh, to, to get granular access to uh, our help desk team. Um, so we don't have to make them you know, an owner of Slack. Uh, they can take care of a lot of those features in Slack through better cloud. Um, I'm pointing at my better cloud screen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so basically, uh, they can get in and they can take care of a lot of these features um, with the tools that are already linked to better cloud. Um, and by doing that, uh, not only do we not have to give them all these admin privileges directly in those tools, and a lot of times, you know, it's like that's the only thing they would be doing in that tool. And that still costs us a license, and that's pretty. That gets pricey uh, over time. Um, so they can do that, and then we also have an uh, an audit log, so we can see every action that was taken uh, in Better Cloud. So it's it's been super handy. I think it's one of my favorite things that a lot of folks don't actually tend to realize at first. But you talked about cost savings there. I mean, there's the aspect of cost savings there's also an aspect of efficiency and time savings, right? Increasing your IT efficiency because there's, you know, first and foremost, rather than having five or eight or 10, 15 different tabs open with different UIs that could change with every update, one centralized control. So like there's value in there. Uh, and then the other aspect is back to super admin. We, talk, we touched on it briefly in the beginning. It's the reducing that security risk, making sure folks that don't need that access don't have that access. And then you have that one, uh, centralized audit log to, to manage. So all about increasing IT efficiency and reducing your risk. So I'm really happy to hear uh, that you're fully taking advantage of that. Uh, yeah. Ben, actually, yeah, no, for sure. Uh, one final question for you. Uh, and this one I always love asking any of our customers, uh, our current customers, I want to ask this to you as well, is when you think about Better Cloud, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Uh, yeah, just leave it there. Uh, my wonderful CSM, Sean, and his walls of shoes. <laughs> They're impressive. Sean's shoe collection is pretty impressive. I'm, I'm very, very envious of that. Uh, well, Brandon, first and foremost, I want to thank you. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule today to join us and share your experiences with Better Cloud uh, and our audience here uh, at Altitude. We're so delighted to have you as a customer. And just everything you're talking about here resonates so much, especially SaaS forwardness and zero touch IT and uh, and more of the use cases that you can be uh, expanding into. So thank you uh, for joining us today. Thanks for having uh, me. Always, you're, you're always welcome here. Uh, and then with that, everyone, I wanna thank everybody for attending today's session. Uh, and if you have any questions, please be sure to reach out. And with that, we'll give you some time back today. <laughs>